Are you feeling skeptical about whether you really got what it takes to become an actuary? Well, hundreds of actuary curious people have emailed me with burning questions that they have about getting into the actuarial career and starting this actuarial journey. And it turns out 90% of those questions come down to three factors, fear, overwhelm, and self-doubt. These aren't the questions with easy Google answers. These are the raw, messy questions that you can't ask AI and get a good answer for. These are the things that keep people stuck. So the first question is, how do I break into the field? Now, this question can take on lots of different uh, styles, I guess you could say. How do I get an internship without experience? How many exams do I need in order to get a job? How do I stand out as a career changer or a non-traditional student? Now, people will pretty much always do this and it's one of the things I kind of dislike a lot about the career is that people will say, oh, I got an actuarial exam with three exams passed or I got an, an actuarial internship with two exams passed or you're going to need to pass another exam. It's all about exams, it seems. That's what people talk about when it comes time to the actuarial, when it comes time to talk about the actuarial career. And the truth of the matter is that actuarial exams do matter, but they are not the whole story and they're far from it. The problem here is that there are so many candidates wanting to get into actuarial jobs. It's very, very competitive. So whenever people are applying for a job, most of them are going to have at least one or two exams passed. Exams don't differentiate you. They are the expectation. If you want to be different, if you want to stand out, even if you don't necessarily have experience yet or an internship yet, you can do that by building up what I call a strong success stack. And this isn't a term that you may have be, maybe have ever heard before, but basically this is all the other qualifications that actuarial employers want aside from exams. So it's things like really strong technical skills. In actuarial roles, you'll be working with Excel, programming maybe. It's also about building up strong communication skills, getting related experience, even if it's not in an actuarial internship. Having some knowledge of actuarial terminology and business and insurance. These things matter to employers and they're going to help you perform well on the job. So if you not don't ignore exams, they are absolutely critical, crucial for getting a job but you can't focus all your time on them because if you do, you're going to be neglecting the things that are actually going to get you the job, which is the success stack. So you might have come to this video thinking, oh, I have to pass some exams. And now maybe I am overwhelming you a little bit with all the other things that you have to sort of be working on at the same time. And I promise I'm going to get to kind of the time management aspect of that in a later question, because that's another concern a lot of actuary curious people have. So I'll get to that. But I really just want you to know that the answer to all of these questions comes down to what I call the study and stack method. That's our method of studying while you're also building up that strong success stack, gaining those qualifications. If you do them both at the same time, that's going to allow you to become a, a top candidate as quickly as possible. And if you are a top candidate, it's basically inevitable that you are going to get hired. It's really just a matter of time. There are also some really good examples of this. John is actually a member of our actuary accelerator community that has recorded an interview with us on this channel. So if you want to watch that, I will link it down below in the description, but he was able to get an actuarial job with just one exam passed. He was right on the brink of passing his second exam when he got the job, but he was able to use his network along with the strong success stack that he had built up in order to get that first job. So you might be hearing people say, especially right now, they're saying you need to pass a third exam in order to get an actuarial job. Not true. Julie is another great example. And I was working with her in our study strategy program. First of all, she passed an exam. She also went through our actuary accelerator community in order to build up strong communication skills, technical skills. She got related experience in an underwriting position and eventually was able to go on and get an actuarial job in the same company that she was doing underwriting for with one exam passed. Now we're actively working together on her second exam, but the point is, you don't need two or three exams passed all the time. Employers are still hiring just with one exam passed. It's all about building up that strong success stack so that you are a great candidate. Okay, so I said I would get to time management. One of the number one questions I get from actuary curious people is how do I balance exam prep with life essentially? So this question takes on the form of like, how do I 
study for actuarial exams while I'm also working? Or how do I balance exams with university studies? How much time do I need to dedicate to studying? Can I pass an exam in three months if I study for 20 hours a week? Well, here's a major difference between what most people do and what most people suggest, honestly, versus what I honestly believe. And I have also gone through this passing many actuarial exams myself. You cannot force more time than you already have. And I know that feeling because a lot of the people that want to get into actuarial roles are people that are very committed. Once they decide on something, once they decide they want to be an actuary, they go all in. They want to achieve that goal as quickly as possible. And that's one of the people, that's one of the reasons I love working with this type of person, but it can also be a downfall because with the actuarial career, this is a very long term journey. It's not something that's going to last six months and then you're done. Like maybe your standard typical goal. This is going to take five to 10 years, maybe even longer. You can't just drop everything you're doing now in order to commit 100% to your actuarial goals. It's just not realistic, it's not possible. And if you try to do that, you are very quickly going to run into burnout, you're going to feel stressed, you're probably going to resent the actuarial career and not even want to go forward with it anymore. So instead, I encourage you to start thinking of this not as a race. It's not about who can get there quicker or how fast can I get get there. It's about just doing it at the pace that you're able to. It's about fitting your studying into the lifestyle that you already have. And one of the best ways I can think to kind of display or talk about this, communicate (laughs) this uh, idea is especially relevant to those of you maybe that have had kids. And it's kind of like having another kid, I would say in a way, because when you have a child, you can't suddenly just stop life and look only after the child, right? Other things still go on in your life. You still have other commitments. You still have other things you like to do. If you decide to pay 100% of your attention to the child, you're not going to be able to get any sleep. You're not going to be looking after yourself and you're not going to be eating. That's the same as going towards an actuarial career. You can't just let it take over your whole life. You need to have balance and you need to set boundaries for what time is dedicated to the child or your career and what time is dedicated to the other things in my life that I still want to continue doing while I am also working on this. So what I recommend is a minimum of 10 hours per week dedicated towards your actuarial career. That is enough time to be studying for exams and also building up that strong success stack and that strong built up network that I talked about earlier so that in a year, maybe even a year and a half from now, remember you have to be reasonable with your timeframes. You will be a top candidate for actuarial job or be very close to it. If you are someone that has more time, then yes, you're going to be able to achieve that faster. And another thing that I find about people that want to be actuaries is that they constantly compare themselves. They see maybe Sally over here who has three exams passed and an internship and they say, oh, I don't have that. How am I going to compete with her? And then they see Bob over here who has three years of underwriting experience and two exams passed and they say, oh, I don't have that either. Like I'm not cut out for this. I'm not as good as these other people. And they're constantly comparing where others are at versus where they are at. And they're not taking into consideration that, yeah, those people started at different times and those people had different limitations in their lives than you have. So you can still make this possible and it can still happen for you. You're just comparing to people that are totally not good comparisons. And usually it's hard to see people that might be good comparisons because you don't know what's going on in their life. You don't know their limitations versus yours. On top of this, I will say that from our study strategy program, I've also found that accountability can be really helpful in balancing these things and planning. So if you actually have a plan in place on how you're going to dedicate time towards studying versus building up a success stack and then someone there to keep you accountable to that plan, It works so much better than leaving the accountability up to yourself because sometimes you're not going to feel like doing it and you still have to. And having that feeling in the back of your mind, knowing that someone is going to be checking in on you, whether it's myself or whether it's a friend or whether it's a family member, having that other person, that third or that second person holding you accountable, 
makes a huge difference. If you are someone that's still looking for a plan, doesn't really know how to prioritize the different things that you need to do, make sure you go get our study strategy guide, which I will link right down below in the description because it goes through the actual recommended study strategy for these exams, but also how to build all that studying and success stack into your own personalized schedule. I call this method the study and stack method because you're studying at the same time as you're building up a success stack. That guide clears everything up for you so you can plan it all out. Now, the third question I get all the time, and this one has similar traces, I guess, to the previous question, but this one is, am I too late or is this realistic for me? So many actuary curious people are learning about this career years after they've graduated or even in their last year of university, college, whatever it may be, they're finding out about it later than they would have liked to or Maybe they have learned about it early on, decided to go a different route, and are now feeling pulled back towards the actuarial career. That happens all the time as well. The answer to this, <laughs> are you listening? The answer is probably not what you would expect or what you're thinking. It's that in most situations, you are going to be 100% fine. Doesn't matter when you're starting, what your background is you are going to be fine as long as you are fully dedicated to this. And in fact, there are probably hundreds of other people that have gone through this exact same thing as you and have successfully been able to break into the actuarial career. Now I say that because I think it can feel kind of motivating and give some incentive towards those people that are out there feeling like kind of alone on this journey, feeling like they don't really know if they're gonna be able to have what it takes. You do, you can if you are gonna be dedicated to it. There are so many others that have achieved that as well. Now, what I 100% believe is that any doubts that you have about your candidacy for actuarial roles, whether it's a low GPA, that's something that I personally dealt with, whether it's starting late, whether it's failing multiple exams, no matter what it is, you can overcome those things by becoming a top candidate. And obviously, right, if you're a top candidate, then you're going to be highly eligible for a large number of actuarial roles. And in order to become a top candidate, what you have to do, I was gonna say all you have to do, but that makes it sound really simplistic. What you have to do is pass actuarial exams and build up a strong success stack. And you're also gonna open up more opportunities for yourself if you also grow a well-connected network. If you think about it, it would be kind of silly for this amazing candidate, someone that has passed exams, built up a really strong success stack, and maybe even been recommended by someone personally. It would be kind of silly for companies to continually decline that person because of one or two small flaws in their candidacy, whether it's that they're starting a little late or whether it's that they have a low GPA. It would be kind of silly. And companies don't do that. And another thing to remember here is that you only need one employer to say yes, just one. There are hundreds of actuarial employers in the US and Canada. You need one of them to say yes. And if you can convince one of them to say yes, then you're gonna be in the career. You will have officially broken into the career. Anyway, I know this video in itself may have opened up way more questions than you came into it with. So the good news here is that I absolutely love to answer actuarial questions. So if you have any, make sure you go ask those down below in the comments. I'm going to answer every single one. And then make sure you go get our study strategy guide to learn how to prepare for actuarial exams and fit all of that success stack building stuff, success stacking I like to call it, into your current lifestyle and schedule. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.